Hello friends, I am Sunil Nalode and welcome to my channel Mechanical Engineering Calculations Simplified. Uh, today we are I am going to simplify one more analysis of uh, toggle joint. Uh, you might have seen this kind of uh, toggle clamps uh, everywhere in workshops and uh, all other places. Uh, and there were many applications of toggle joint in fact uh, basically a toggle joint is used to amplify the input force in this particular example uh, the objective is to clamp the blue color part in the clamp with a manual force now this manual force is being applied on a lever here and as you can see the mechanism is very simple in a way it has only two links uh, and these two links are joined together uh, with pinch pinned joint and uh, these two links are then joined on the base uh, this this first link is joined on the base and the second link is connected to the um, a slider this yellow color slider which moves uh, two and four in this uh, frame now what happens is uh, in initial condition this is the unclamped condition or open condition uh, where the two links are at an angle with each other when you push this particular lever uh, towards the clamp uh, it closes the clamp as you can see in the right side picture it has closed the clamp so what has ha happened is these two links have come just almost in, in front of each other so this is an observation that we have here that when these two links are at an angle it was open and when it closed the two links are almost horizontal or almost in line uh, to, with each other so what happens here is at end of it when the when the clamp is totally closed the slider uh, the which is which is actually clamping the uh, the object or the part it has inserted has has imposed a good amount of force to clamp the uh, part in the fixture now uh, what happens here is uh, very interesting to know uh, the fact that this is just a simple mechanism an inversion of a four bar mechanism uh, and there are many applications of this mechanism like uh, one that I've shown here, clamp, uh, toggle clamp, and uh, many like riveting machines, press uh, press uh, tools, uh, and even uh, weapons, uh, where uh, a massive amount of force is required with application of small amount of force. So, what is actually a toggle toggle joint from mechanical? Uh, engineering uh, analysis point of view it is actually uh, made of four links it is actually an inversion of uh, a four bar mechanism uh, the first link is the fixed joint uh, the second link is a b the third link is b c and the fourth link is the slider now you can see here that unlike uh, in four bar mechanism uh, where the force is applied or, or the torque is applied on the crank or the first link instead in toggle joint a vertical force is applied on the joint between these two links between joint a b and b c that means a, a vertical force is applied on node b and this vertical force actually uh, creates horizontal reaction on slider c and now that reaction is called as c uh, p that means with a with applied force f the resistance force p is actually balancing the system and the mechanism is remaining in say static condition uh, i have a given a parameter alpha to denote the angle uh, between the link and the first link a b and the horizontal line uh, for simplicity of analysis for the first hand i have considered these two links to be symmetric the length of a b and length of link b c is same now what happens actually here is when you apply a vertical force 
it creates vertical reactions at both the uh, A and C uh, points, right? So this vertical force F is being balanced by F by 2 on node A and F by 2 on node C and the direction is opposite to force F. So thus creating an equilibrium in vertical direction. And the horizontal force that reaction finally or the resistance that the resistance needed uh, or the load needed to be pushed here uh, P is will have uh, will create a horizontal reaction at point A. It cannot create a reaction at this point right in at point B because it is it will not be supported anywhere right. Uh, so these are the uh, prima facie if you look like uh, if, if you look from the first uh, observation this would this would be would be the forces but just uh, observe carefully the link ab can't have uh, the the consider the portion between the joints a and joint b this particular length would have a force in line to the link length correct so that is another force so that particular force is creating a compression in the link a b and same in link b c so that reaction force i am calling as r so it is at the angle at an angle of alpha right so if i consider the node a it will have three forces to balance out one vertical force f by 2 which is supporting the vertical applied force f one horizontal force p which is actually supporting the uh, final output force P uh, and a reaction in the link R. So actually these three forces can create a equilibrium at this node A. So I'm just transferring these forces along it their length of action, uh, the line of action just to have just to simplify the problem. So what, what you can see here is uh, the horizontal force P will be uh, balanced by the horizontal component of a uh, reaction R. Correct? This vertical force F by 2 will not have any horizontal reaction. So the horizontal reaction of a uh, horizontal component of uh, for a reaction R will be R cos alpha. Right? So the horizontal component, horizontal, if we do horizontal force balance, the uh, uh, horizontal rightward force P is balanced by horizontal leftward force P cos alpha, right? In same way, if we do vertical force balance, the vertical force F by 2 is balanced by a vertical component of uh, reaction R, that is R sin alpha. So in this way, we find R is equal to F divided by 2 sin alpha. Now I put this particular value of R in this equation then I get a formula like Fp is equal to F divided by 2 sin alpha divided by cos alpha. Now sin alpha by cos alpha is tan alpha. So P is equal to F divided by 2 tan alpha. Now uh, I have just created, uh, separated F and this particular component. Uh, so this component 1 divided by 2 tan alpha into F will be equal to P. Now we see here that F is the applied force and P is the input force, uh, so, sorry P is the output force. So this particular 1 divided by 2 tan alpha is the amplification factor or in this case we are calling it as coefficient. So if we apply a force F it will be amplified by a magnitude of 1 divided by 2 tan alpha and the output force will be generated P. So that particular coefficient amplification coefficient I am calling it as 1 divided by 2 tan alpha and that depends uh, you can see this coefficient divided inversely is, is inversely proportional to tan alpha. So I am just trying to understand what happens with uh, the alpha value being from uh, starting from 0 to say 90 degree. So this is the nominal condition that we have seen. Now, if say alpha approaches 90 degree, what happens is it doesn't create any horizontal force, right? Because 
this vertical force is acting on like a like a link on a vertical beam uh, column so vertical column so it doesn't it will not create a horizontal reaction now what happens here when alpha approaches zero almost zero this vertical force creates a very infinite or infinitely amplified force here why it is so if i plot the coefficient with respect to alpha with respect to the angle you can see here uh, when the angle up zero approaches at uh, the alpha approaches zero the angle value approaches zero this coefficient becomes infinite okay so th that is the reason we get a highly amplified amplified output force when alpha, when this alpha angle approaches zero so that is why in the first in the first image if you can see here the angle between these two links has approached almost zero that is why giving the maximum amplification possible here theoretically this amplification is infinite alpha but having constraints of the links being par par parallel to each other then they can flip on the other side so you can't go uh, exactly close to zero degrees but you go closer to zero degrees so if you say uh, for practical applications so if you guess, go almost around say um, two degrees or three degrees um, closer then you may get a amplification factor of around 15 or 10 to 15 times so you apply one newton of force and you get an output force as 10 to 15 newtons so that that is quite good amount of amplification and serves most of the uh, most of our mechanical engineering applications so this is a small code scilab code i uh, wrote to uh, plot this uh, uh, talk um, this alpha uh, this coefficient value uh, in uh, scilab uh, that's it thank you for, guys and uh, be tuned to for for next updates and uh, some interesting problems like this uh, see you then thanks bye